But hey, free tan. Hey everyone, let's talk climate change, that fun little thing we're doing to the planet. It's like we left the oven on, except the oven is Earth, and instead of cookies, we're baking ourselves. The good news? Think of all the tans we're getting. The bad news? Everything else. We're talking hotter temperatures, weirder weather, and oceans so high they'll need floaties. It's not great, folks. It's like Mother Nature looked at our environmental report card and said, see me after class and bring a glacier. But before you start digging a bunker and stocking up on canned goods, let's talk solutions. Because while we may have started this whole climate mess, we can still fix it, or at least try to, right? Otherwise, future generations will be left wondering why we didn't try harder. That, and they'll be too busy outrunning hurricanes to care. So, what's on the menu for saving the planet? Well, first up, adaptation. It's not just for animals pretending to be leaves anymore. Climate change adaptation is like putting on a raincoat, except the raincoat is made of common sense and sustainable living. It's about changing the way we live to deal with the changes we've caused. Think of it as a cosmic apology to the planet, except instead of saying sorry, we're actually doing something about it. Imagine that, we're talking about things like building seawalls to stop coastal cities from turning into Atlantis 2.0, or developing drought-resistant crops so we can still have food when the weather throws a tantrum. It's about being proactive instead of reactive. Because let's face it, reacting to climate change is like playing chess with a pigeon messy, unpredictable, and you'll probably lose. One of the biggest things we need to adapt to is rising sea levels. I'm not talking about a little extra water at the beach, people. I'm talking full-on water world situation. Except without Kevin Costner's gills. Probably. That means cities need to start building seawalls like yesterday. And we're not talking about some flimsy little fences. We're talking about walls so high they'll need their own zip code. Think of it as an investment opportunity. Who wouldn't want beachfront property in the year 2100? But it's not just about building barriers. It's also about moving people away from high-risk areas. I know, I know, moving sucks, but so does losing your house to a hurricane. It's all about choosing your battles wisely, folks. Next up, let's talk about food. Because if there's one thing we need to survive, it's snacks. But climate change is messing with our food supply. Droughts, floods, and extreme temperatures are like the culinary equivalent of a toddler with a whisk unpredictable and messy. That's why we need to adapt our agricultural practices. We're talking about things like developing drought-resistant crops and using water more efficiently. It's like giving our farmers a crash course in climate change survival. Think of it as Top Chef Apocalypse Edition. And while we're at it, let's talk about where we build our cities. Sprawling urban areas are great for traffic jams, not so much for the environment. We need to start building up, not out. Think vertical farms, rooftop gardens, and buildings that generate their own energy. Think the Jetsons, but with less astro and more sustainability. Section 5. Don't be a fossil fool. Real world reasons to get real. Okay, let's get serious for a second. Remember that heat wave that hit Europe a while back? Yeah, that was climate change saying hello. And by hello, I mean prepare to sweat your pants off. Scientists say these extreme weather events are only going to get more frequent and intense. Fun times, right? And it's not just the weather. Rising sea levels are already displacing communities, especially in low-lying island nations. It's like the planet decided to play a game of the floor is lava, but the lava is actually water. And the stakes are way higher. Look, the science is clear. Climate change is real. It's happening now. And it's affecting all of us. This isn't some conspiracy theory cooked up by Big Windmill. This is our reality. And the sooner we accept that, the sooner we can start doing something about it. Section 6. In Action Comedy Gold, if it wasn't so terrifying. Now, I know what you're thinking. This all sounds expensive and complicated. Can't we just keep doing what we're doing and hope for the best? Well, sure, you can do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's like ignoring a flat tire and hoping it'll fix itself. Spoiler alert, it won't. Because here's the thing about inaction. It's a recipe for disaster. It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. You know it's coming, but you just can't look away. Except in this case, the train is our planet and we're all passengers. The longer we wait to act, the more extreme the consequences will be. We're talking about more extreme weather events, more displaced communities, and more economic damage. It's like we're playing a game of chicken with the planet. And let me tell you, the planet doesn't blink. Section 7. Future You versus Climate Change. A cage match. Imagine this. It's the year 2050. 
the world has changed dramatically. You're sitting on your porch sipping your morning coffee made with lab-grown coffee beans because real coffee is now extinct thanks to climate change. The taste is different, but it's the new normal. Suddenly, your robot butler wheels over and says, Sir, there's a Category 5 hurricane headed our way. It's become a routine announcement. You sigh and say, Again? The frequency of these storms is exhausting. Didn't we just have one last week? The robot butler nods. Yes, sir. The cycle seems never-ending. And the week before that. The damage is piling up and recovery feels impossible. That's the future we're facing if we don't act now. A future where extreme weather is the norm. A future of extreme weather, food shortages, and constant uncertainty. The shelves have the technology and the knowledge. We can still adapt and mitigate the worst effects of climate change. Renewable energy and sustainable practices are key, but it's going to take a collective effort. Everyone has a role to play. It's going to take all of us working together. From individuals to communities, every action counts. So put on your metaphorical hard hats, folks. The work ahead is challenging, but necessary. It's time to get to work. Together, we can build a resilient future. Section 8. What can you do besides panic eating ice cream? Okay, so we've covered the doom and gloom. The news can be overwhelming and it's easy to feel like there's nothing we can do. Now let's talk about solutions. There are many ways we can make a difference, both individually and collectively. Because while individual actions may seem small, they add up. Every little bit counts when it comes to making a positive impact. It's like that old saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Small, consistent actions can lead to big changes over time. Except in this case, we're trying to save the elephant. Our goal is to protect and preserve our planet. And also, maybe not eat it? Adopting a plant-based diet can significantly reduce your carbon footprint. So, what can you do? A lot, actually. There are numerous actions you can take to contribute to a healthier planet. You can reduce your carbon footprint by driving less, flying less, and eating less meat. These changes can have a significant impact. You can support businesses that are committed to sustainability choose products that are eco-friendly, and support companies that prioritize the environment. You can vote for politicians who actually care about the environment. Your vote can help shape policies that protect our planet, and you can educate yourself and others about climate change. Knowledge is power, and spreading awareness is crucial. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by the sheer scale of this problem. The data and statistics can be daunting, but don't give up hope. Every little bit helps. Small actions when multiplied by millions of people can transform the world. And remember, if we all do our part, we can create a better future for ourselves and for generations to come. Our collective efforts can lead to a sustainable and thriving planet. Plus, think of the bragging rights. You'll be able to proudly say you were part of the solution. Oh, you're worried about climate change? Well, I took action and made a difference. I helped solve that back in 2024. You'll be a legend. Your efforts today will be remembered and celebrated in the future. Section 9. We're all in this together, like it or not. Here's the thing about climate change. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care if you're rich or poor, liberal or conservative, cat person or dog person. It's going to affect us all. So we might as well stop arguing about whether or not it's real and start working together to address it. Think of it like this. We're all stuck on this giant spaceship we call Earth. And right now, we're headed straight for a black hole. We can either keep arguing about who's to blame, or we can put our differences aside and try to steer the ship to safety. The choice is ours. So let's put on our metaphorical spacesuits, grab our metaphorical wrenches, and get to work. Because the fate of humanity, and our ability to enjoy a decent cup of coffee in the future, depends on it. Section 10. Act now, or prepare for a world of weird. In conclusion, climate change is real, it's happening now, and it's time to get serious about addressing it. The evidence is all around us, from the melting glaciers to the deforestation and the increasing frequency of floods. We can adapt to the changes that are already happening, and we can mitigate further damage by reducing our carbon footprint. Simple actions like planting trees, installing solar panels, and using wind energy can make a significant difference, but we need to act now. The clock is ticking, and every moment we delay, the situation worsens because the alternative is a world of weird and unpredictable weather, food shortages, and mass displacement. Imagine a world where extreme weather events become the norm, where farmlands turn barren, and where people are constantly on the move, fleeing from floods and other disasters. And let's be honest, nobody wants that. The stress and uncertainty would be overwhelming. 
except maybe those doomsday preppers who have been stocking up on canned goods and building underground bunkers. They might think they're ready, but is that really the life we want? But even they'll get tired of eating spam eventually. A diet of canned food isn't sustainable or enjoyable in the long run, so let's choose the path of action. Let's come together as a community to clean up our environment and take meaningful steps towards sustainability. Let's choose a future where we can enjoy the planet without having to worry about it melting, flooding, or catching on fire. Imagine a world where families can enjoy the beach, hike through lush forests, and kids can play in parks without any fear. Let's choose a future where we can all breathe a little easier. Literally. Cleaner air means healthier lives for everyone. Because the future of our planet depends on it. The choices we make today will shape the world for future generations. And also, because I really don't want to have to give up my morning coffee. Let's protect the things we love by taking action now. Chapter 11. The Uninhabitable Earth. The Earth has become uninhabitable. Extreme weather events are the norm and many species have gone extinct. Humanity struggles to survive in a world that is no longer hospitable. Imagine waking up to a sky darkened by perpetual storms, where the air is thick with pollution and the land is barren. Coastal cities are submerged and once fertile lands have turned to deserts. The food chain is disrupted, leading to widespread hunger and conflict over scarce resources. We see images of abandoned cities overrun by nature but not the kind we remember. Instead, invasive species dominate and the biodiversity we once took for granted is lost. The oceans once teeming with life are now vast, dead zones. This is not a dystopian fantasy, it's a potential reality if we fail to act. But amidst the darkness, there is still hope. By recognizing the gravity of our situation and committing to change, we can still turn the tide. The future is in our hands and it's time to act before this vision of the uninhabitable Earth becomes our reality. Let's choose a path of sustainability, compassion, and resilience. Because the Earth is our only home, and it's worth fighting for. Chapter 12. The Cost of Inaction The cost of inaction has been immense. Economies have collapsed and millions of people have been displaced. The world is a shadow of its former self, and the future looks bleak. Imagine the bustling cities we once knew, now reduced to ghost towns. Financial markets have crumbled, leaving nations in ruin. Unemployment rates have skyrocketed, and basic necessities are out of reach for many. The gap between the rich and the poor has widened, leading to social unrest and instability. We see images of deserted streets, empty schools and hospitals overwhelmed with the sick and dying. Natural disasters have become more frequent and more severe, further straining already fragile infrastructures. Climate refugees wander in search of safety but find few places willing or able to take them in. The cost of inaction is not just measured in dollars but in lives lost and futures shattered. But it's not too late to change course. By taking bold, decisive action now, we can still mitigate the worst effects of climate change. We must invest in renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, and resilient communities. The time to act is now before the cost of inaction becomes too great to bear. The future is in our hands, and we have the power to shape it. Let's choose a path of hope, innovation, and determination, because the Earth is our only home, and it's worth fighting for. Despite the dire situation, there is still a glimmer of hope. Communities are coming together to find solutions, and there is a renewed sense of urgency to address climate change. The future is uncertain, but there is still a chance to make a difference. We see images of people planting trees, installing solar panels, and cleaning up polluted areas. Innovative technologies are being developed to capture carbon and reduce emissions. Grassroots movements are gaining momentum, demanding action from governments and corporations. Young activists are leading the charge, inspiring others to join the fight for a sustainable future. Renewable energy projects are being implemented worldwide, providing clean power and creating jobs. Farmers are adopting sustainable practices, ensuring food security and protecting ecosystems. Communities are building resilience against natural disasters, with green infrastructure and climate-adaptive designs. The spirit of collaboration and innovation is alive, proving that when we work together, we can overcome even the greatest challenges. The story of climate change is still being written, and we have the power to change its course. Let's harness our collective strength and ingenuity to create a brighter, more sustainable future for all. Because the Earth is our only home and it's worth fighting for.